What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG, and I'm here today with some spurs for you. We got 10 more this morning, Wednesday morning, as we've gotten 10 every morning since Monday, and hopefully that's the pattern that they'll keep following. So let's let's run over these real quick. The first one I want to talk about is cool. This is Dragon Lord's Servant, and we've been talking about what's the dragon two drop going to be. Now we might still see a two drop dragon, it's entirely possible, but this goes definitely in the limited, the sealed um, dragons deck, and it's a two mana one three. We talk about how good those are in limited a lot, and red, we hardly ever see those in red, so this gives you a chance to build up your defenses, hold the fort for a couple of turns, and then play your dragons, and this facilitates exactly that too, so I'm a little excited about this card, especially in limited. Don't know how far it's going to go in constructed, but this is a dragon themed set, so it's entirely possible that this sees a little bit of constructed play. I, I wouldn't be too surprised. And for constructed, I give it like a six and a half. You know, it's a, it's a niche kind of card for that. But in limited, I give this like a solid seven and a half. I think that even if you're only playing a couple of dragons in your deck, this is worth it as a two drop, a one three that sets up a little bit of a wall and helps you play those bombs a little bit later and earlier than your opponent, which is always important. To go along with that, we got a Dragon Fodder. I was hoping that they would reprint this card. It just makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, Dragon Fodder. Does this take the place of Raise the Alarm in the sort of red-white tokens deck? Now, we get this as a two-drop, and Hordling Outburst as a three-drop, and Mono Red. So, I think that Dragon Fodder could definitely have a place. It works with Monastery Swift Sphere and other prowess creatures very well. Um, I mean, it, it, it's a lot like Raise the Alarm. Um... Yeah, this card will see standard play. Uh, in this in this environment, yeah, I, I just said it like that. In this environment, I actually give Dragon's Fodder like a seven and a quarter. I, I, or Dragon Fodder. A seven and a quarter. This isn't bad at all, obviously. Obviously. Um, give it a chance. Give it a chance. These token generators have been very popular, and we just got another very good one. Let's go over the cycle of Megamorphs that we got today. We got one in each color, some of them exciting, some of them not so exciting. Let's do the couple of not so exciting first. Um, Meringue River Skeleton is fine, especially in Sealed. It's got, um, it's got Regenerate, and it only costs two mana, and it's only one to regenerate it. Regenerating creatures are good um, in limited environments. So, yeah, it's not that this isn't horribly exciting, but obviously it won't see standard play. I don't think any of these Megamorphs will, um, these particular Megamorphs. Uh, but in Limited, these are mostly all-stars, including this guy. Um, I, in Limited, I, I'm going to go ahead and just say that he's like, a, a, probably again, a solid seven and a quarter. He's a really good defensive creature. Like, imagine in Fate Reforged, you're drafting that with this set. Um, you know, good one drop is Typhoid Rats, a good two drop is this guy, and then you've got your defense is very well set up at that point. Next guy is Red's Megamorph. That's Stormcrag Elemental. That's uh, Stormcrag. Anyway, um, yeah, pretty vanilla, honestly. Not much to say about this guy. Um, a 5-5, five five, maybe 6-6, six six, even Trampler. Good. Seems good. Uh, steep cost, big power toughness. You see creatures like this all the time, and they're usually good in sealed. Six and a quarter? <laughs> Although you you may play him in sealed. I'm not saying he's bad, but six and a quarter is about the middle of the road, but still maybe playable score. That's that's Stormcrag all day. Godol Lurker. I like creatures like this. He's just a one mana, one one, unblockable. You can Megamorph him for just the one blue mana. Um I I'm a fan of stuff like this. Invisible Stalker, he ain't, but I like little unblockable creatures that you can build a battleship out of, and it's not a safe strategy. I think we all know that. This probably won't see standard play, but with all the enchantments running around, in Fate Reforged especially, then this will see limited play, and it will be a good card there. I actually give this a solid 6.75, you know? I'm, I'm feeling like I don't usually like one-drops in Sealed especially, but cards that you can build a game plan around are decent, and as we've seen, so far, in Favor Forge and in this set so far, removal is relatively scarce. So you don't have to worry about it as much. Even Sunstriker is the white one. Um, I I like this card for a weird reason. Um, yeah, we used to have, and I'm going to put the card up right here in front of my face when I find it, but we used to have a 3 meta 1-1 one, one flying double strike soldier guy, bird, cat thing um, <laughs> in standard. And uh, he was really good in the deck with... Again, I'll put the picture right there. The guy that was a 5-mana 4-4, four, four, when he comes into play, he has the keyword abilities of anything that's in your graveyard. Um, we have a creature very similar to that in Soul Flayer right now, and this goes in the sort of casual Soul Flayer deck. Now, obviously, there is Chromanta Flayer that it's actually making the rounds at tournaments right now. 
I don't know that this slots into that, but they are running a red creature with double strike just so they can get the double strike. So it's entirely possible they run this guy instead, get two, ability, two abilities off of one uh, delve. Um, I am a fan of this, especially in sealed environments. However, caveat before I move on to the next card, this might not be in good as sealed as, as good in sealed as we normally think that a card like this is. Uh, two two flying double strike, that's good, but we're in a format full of huge dragons, most of them having five toughness. Now, this will take out the three and four toughness dragons. That seems pretty good on defense, and you need flyers on your team that can deal with the dragons, but the larger dragons are just going to blow right by him. He's not going to be that important, but, but he has his place in your sealed deck. Um, I will go ahead and give him um, a six, six and a quarter, one of those again. He's playable, he's solid, he has his drawbacks, and he has his advantages, but I think this guy is very playable in your sealed deck, not necessarily in your constructed, but maybe Chromanta Flare. I reserve that. And the final Mega Morph card that got spoiled today was Salt Road Ambushers. Uh, this is actually really good in Sealed, I think. Um, this, basically, whenever you flip a guy up, he gets two plus one plus one counters. And if you Mega Morph a guy, he gets three, basically. So this guy would become a 6-6 six, six for five on the Mega Morph. Ah, that's fine. That's aggressively costed. But green, very aggressively costed in this set, from what we've seen so far. Um, yeah, this is, very, this is very desirable in Sealed, I would say. Um, you know, I would almost give it a, a seven, probably a seven and three quarters, honestly, because some strategies won't straight up revolve around him, but will be helped out tremendously by him. You know, you've got your morphs and your manifest and your mega morphs and yeah, I don't see standard play for this guy being a thing, obviously, but sealed, he is incredibly, incredibly solid. Um, I'm actually liking the way green's shaping up a little bit so far, and I rarely say that. Oh, and another thing real quick, we got um, Evolving Wilds back. That card's back. Evolving Wilds! Welcome back, Evolving Wilds. Faux Razor Regent might be my favorite regent for sealed that we've seen thus far. Um, I really like Fight as a green ability. I always have. Um, it's a really cool and flavor flavorful way for green to be able to take care of creatures. Um, it makes a lot of sense, too, fighting. Um, and this guy really helps <laughs> with that. Um, he busts a creature when he comes into play, and he helps your other creatures bust up guys. Um, so yeah, I don't see anything wrong with him in sealed. Um, high, higher toughness is good too. Um, don't think that he'll make standard. Um, we do have the mono green devotion decks that are looking for another solid, good, high powered green creature, but I don't, I don't think this is the guy, but I will in sealed give this guy a straight up nine. Like he is a bomb in that format. And finally, I saved this one for last. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think we're all a little excited about Narset. Narset Transcendent is the Planeswalker version of Narset, and that's really cool, right? Um, a lot of people are slightly cold on this card, but I don't see why. I mean, I get their arguments, but in a blue-white control deck, this is... But like where you want to be, and they've played four mana Planeswalkers before, no problem. Uh, Jace from the Ravnica block. Um, yeah, this first ability, the, the Chandra-esque ability, but you get to actually keep the card and put it in your hand instead of you have to play it that turn. This is this is wonderful. Um, you're going to be playing mostly these kinds of spells, um, non-creature, non-land cards, in blue-white control or an Esper control or whatever you're doing, and you're going to get a lot of free draws off of this. Um, it's it's Her negative two is crazy, too. I mean, obviously it doesn't work with your counter spells, but all of your removal, your mass removal, your card drawing spells, uh, all of them are made much better with rebound. And if my understanding is correct, the mass removal is kind of cool because you can't, you know, they will, you'll negative to her, you'll play your whatever in hostilities, crux of fate, and then they can't play a creature next turn because you'll get to rebound that spell again your next upkeep. Uh, seems good uh, that you, it basically buys you a whole extra turn on removal and it doubles up removal. I mean, it's just, that's, that is objectively good, I would say. Uh, being able to, removal spells are now two for ones. Um, over time, uh, that's, yeah, sign me up for that. Um, and her final ability is an emblem that works very good in the mirror match. Um, your opponents can't cast non-creature spells. Um, yeah, that seems good um, in the control mirror, definitely. Um, I think you'll probably board Narset out against more aggro-based strategies, but, uh, or maybe board Hort in, but I do think that this is a main, uh, main deck card for blue-white control. 
Definitely. I'm going to go ahead and say that. I, like I said, I've been thinking about this card like all day, and um, there is definitely a lot of advantages to a card like this, and Blue White has wanted a, a Planeswalker like this for a lot of time. Just card advantage, days, four days, and uh, being able to cast your spells essentially twice is nuts. I mean, that's more card advantage, that is more removal, and I think it's worth a turn to play Narset, honestly. She obviously doesn't win you the game or anything. She has absolutely nothing about her as a win condition, which can be a problem, but like I said, people play Jace from Ravnica Block um, as sort of a stall mechanism, um, an advantage tool, so I think that we'll definitely see Narset in Standard. Um, definitely see Narset in Standard. I give Narset an eight and a quarter for Standard play. Um, I know that there's going to be people that challenge me on that, but I think that um, Blue White Control really, really, really wants this card, and it's very good in the mirror. And even against like Jeskai, if the problem with it is very slow against these more aggro decks that do use a lot of non-creatures, but it's still, if you can get her out before Jeskai starts going nuts, then this is a fantastic card. Um, you won't get the emblem before she before Jeskai starts going nuts. You you very likely won't get the emblem, but if if you do, if you do, and against control, you'll you know a control mirror, you'll very likely get it. Now, will Jeskai play this card? Will heroic play this card? No. Uh, will Jeskai play this card? Maybe, maybe. I'd like to know what you guys think because I've been I've been struggling with that all day. Will Jeskai play this card? Um, you let me know. What's up, Wizards? Well, as I was putting this this video up, actually, I saw that there was one more card spoiled. That's kind of cool, and that is Lightning Berserker. Uh, yeah, this card looks kind of interesting at the very least. I wish that he was a warrior, but you know, can't always have what you want. Um. You know, one mana, one one that pumps and, and dashes, by the way. He has haste. Um, I'm not 100% sold. Now, of course, the first time I saw this card was 10 seconds ago, so I haven't had a lot of time to form an opinion. But obviously, there are better one drops. Mono Red doesn't just play the one one drop, though. Um, that being said, I think that there's an abundance of better one drops in standard Mono Red. Um... This is kind of cool in draft if you're building that mono red deck. Uh, I don't really like it that much in sealed, although it is a mana sink. Those are traditionally good. Um, but I'm not going to rate this card or anything right now, but I will go ahead and say that she's neat. With that, I think that, uh, yeah, we can be done for now. Um, look forward to more spoilers, guys. Subscribe to Strictly Better MTG for all the DTK spoilers and a bunch of other stuff that we do. Uh, we've got a really good video right now about um, everything about Magic Origins, including the Planeswalker Origins, what we know about them. So check that out on our channel. I'm Dev, and I'll see you guys later. Appreciate you.